Hello, architecture enthusiasts. Welcome to a journey through the fascinating history and design brilliance of the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, Japan, a masterpiece conceived by the legendary Frank Lloyd Wright. In the words of Wright himself, when I built the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, Japan, I tried to make a coherent link between what the Japanese then were on their knees and what they now wanted to be on their feet. Wright embarked on this project in 1916 with a dual mission. First, he aimed to pay homage to the rich Japanese culture, recognizing it as a genuine force standing firm on its own ground. Second, he had the daunting task of creating a modern, earthquake-proof structure to withstand the tremors that haunted the region. He faced the challenge of blending comfort for foreigners with the needs of the Japanese, ensuring the Imperial Hotel would serve as a social clearinghouse for the official life of the nation. To counter the seismic threat, Wright innovatively rejected traditional Japanese building materials, opting for brick and reinforced concrete. His deep understanding of earthquake dynamics led him to devise a foundation plan that involved short, shallow foundations, floating the building on the soft soil. The building was designed as two hands interlocking, flexible yet resilient. Wright's dedication to earthquake resilience led to extensive testing. Concrete pins were driven into the ground, loaded with pig iron to simulate forces. The foundation plan was meticulously calculated, with concrete pins strategically placed to distribute the building's weight effectively. With a solid foundation in place, Wright turned his attention to flexibility. He divided the building into parts, employing joints throughout to allow movement. To address potential subterranean disturbances, he introduced the concept of cantilever slabs, creating a romantic and free-flowing structural design. Wright introduced a unit system to maintain a consistent scale in the extensive project. However, obtaining a building permit wasn't easy. Authorities were skeptical of the unconventional approach. Wright personally explained his innovative ideas, convincing them to trust in his vision. As construction commenced, the scale of the project posed challenges. Wright brought in contractor Paul Muller to bring order to the chaos. Hand-laid outer and inner shells, hand-wrought copper tiles, and the use of a unique stone called Oya showcased the craftsmanship involved. Over 700 drawings were created to realize Wright's vision. The Imperial Hotel officially opened on September 1, 1923. Just in time, as a devastating earthquake struck Tokyo, Miraculously, the hotel stood undamaged, a testament to Wright's innovative design. Even in the face of disaster, the hotel remained a symbol of resilience. In 1919, construction began on the second Imperial Hotel, officially opening on September 1, 1923. The hotel's distinctive H and I shape, designed roughly like its own logo, showcased Wright's unique approach. The North Wing opened in July 1922, with the hotel officially completing in June 1923. Wright's Imperial Hotel not only survived natural disasters, but also left an enduring mark on architectural history. Its design influenced subsequent structures, and its significance goes beyond the physical structure, embodying a harmonious blend of East and West. Now, Let's delve into the intricate layout of the Imperial Hotel, a structure that not only defied seismic forces, but also captivated visitors with its thoughtful design. Wright's design embraced a distinctive H and I shape. The guest room wings formed the letter H, creating a sense of symmetry, while the central wing, taller and shaped like the letter I, housed public rooms. This layout reflected the architect's meticulous planning, offering a harmonious blend of form and function. As we step into the central part of the hotel, we encounter the heart of the public areas. The lobby welcomes guests with its open space, adorned with balconies for intimate gatherings. 
the dining room opens out to tea gardens on both sides, providing a serene environment for culinary experiences. At the rear, a towering structure houses a cabaret, theater, and on the uppermost level, a grand two-story banquet hall known as the Peacock Room. Descending to the basement, we find the strategically placed kitchen, a bustling hub to efficiently serve the main dining room, private dining rooms, cabaret, and the banquet hall on the top level. Adjacent to the kitchen, the cabaret offers entertainment and adds another dimension to the guest experience. The main floor, labeled as the two-story promenade, serves as a social gathering space. Running through the entire building, it leads to the theater on one side and a parlor on the other. The parlor boasts two fireplaces with captivating polychrome murals crafted in carved stone, gold leaf, and paint. As we ascend, the foyer opens onto a bridge over the promenade, guiding us to stairs ascending to the uppermost level, the majestic two-story banquet hall or peacock room. This grand space offers a spectacular setting for events and celebrations. The foyer also extends in the opposite direction, leading to a roof terrace overlooking the main dining room and sections of the lobby. Wright's original plan included a lotus pond at the front port cochere, emphasizing the harmony between nature and architecture. Although cost concerns led to the removal of this feature, the hotel's exterior featured hand-wrought copper tiles instead of heavy roof tiles, contributing to both aesthetics and safety. As we continue our architectural journey through the Imperial Hotel, let's now focus on the elevations, offering a glimpse into the exterior facades and the artistic expression that defined Frank Lloyd Wright's vision. Wright's approach to the Imperial Hotel's elevations was nothing short of groundbreaking. The exterior showcased a unique blend of form and function, reflecting both Western and Japanese influences. The use of handcrafted materials, such as the specially made bricks forming a two inches wall with four inches spurs, demonstrated Wright's commitment to craftsmanship. A striking feature of the elevations was the cantilevered design. Wright, recognizing the flexibility and freedom inherent in cantilever structures, incorporated concrete cantilever slabs that extended across the building from side to side. This not only added a touch of architectural romance, but also contributed to the earthquake-resistant nature of the structure. Integral to the elevations were decorative elements crafted from a unique stone called Oya. This stone, found in a quarry near Nico, was easily cut and hollowed out, allowing for intricate and visually striking ornamentation. The use of Oya stone added a touch of Japanese authenticity to the exterior design. As our architectural journey through the Imperial Hotel draws to a close, we stand in awe of Frank Lloyd Wright's ingenuity, resilience, and his profound tribute to Japanese culture. The Imperial Hotel, with its seismic-defying design, cantilevered structures, and carefully crafted elevations, stands not just as a physical structure, but as a testament to the enduring power of visionary architecture. As we bid farewell to this iconic project, let us carry with us the lessons embedded in its story, the delicate dance between tradition and innovation, the pursuit of beauty and functionality, and the unwavering commitment to craftsmanship. The Imperial Hotel is more than a building. It's a living narrative of cultural appreciation and architectural brilliance. Join us on future explorations as we uncover more tales of architectural wonder and creativity. Until then, may the spirit of the Imperial Hotel inspire your appreciation for the artistry that shapes our built world. Thank you for being a part of this journey and remember to keep marveling at the wonders of architecture. Don't forget like and subscribe if you found this video interesting. Stay tuned for more content. Farewell.